Just a quick warning, please keep your headphones down at a safe volume level to where it doesn't damage any of your hearing. Just because this video gets too loud and the microphone gets off at some points. So I freaking- ah! Fuck. I heard something. I did too, it's right down the freaking hole. Oh, Shut your it. stupid mouth! What? Hello? Let me try and communicate with it. Stop. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 retard alert! YouTube. Now say what you want about YouTube. Uh, it's been a mixed bag over the years. <laughs> and a lot has pretty much shifted. Um, now what if I told you that YouTube back in the day? was actually good. Oh, you now, you would probably be like, Fuck out of here, boy. And I can't blame you for that. But, today's topic is gonna kinda correlate to that. Now, the question I'll be asking you guys today, This might be hard to believe, but are you aware that nobody gives a shit? Is, what happens when a platform like YouTube drastically shifts so much to the point where they start stomping out I their know, own I talent know. for show, their own monetary game. Today's topic is covering lost and forgotten YouTubers. I didn't know I wanted to spend my night with a pretentious bitch. Pona Show was a channel created in May 5th, 2008. Being created both by Damian Sanders Baron and Kyle McGrath Adams. But they actually wouldn't upload until August 21st, 2012. For a quick explanation, the whole the idea of Pony Show was for Kyle and Damien to compete in each video to see who was better at playing video games. He means you son of a bitch. <laughs> he got one. How? More to go. Oh, oh, oh. Did you accidentally pick the level you can see 10 miles in? <laughs> this world is so beautiful. That. Oh, I wish we lived in this world. Oh, it's so fucking beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's so beautiful. Look, everything around you looks exactly the <laughs> fucking same. Kyle and Damien's first video would actually be Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, but Damien actually mislabeled the, the first fucking, uh, episode as the second episode, because, you know, he's a goober like that. Why is Mario the bad guy? I don't know. Why is he slapping alligators in the ass with a whip? <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> And after that Donkey Kong Jr. video, they would play games like Sonic, uh, Metroid, Mega Man, and as time went on and on, they then started playing more recent games like Final Fantasy at Freddy's, Happy Wheels, Super Meat Boy, Slender, Hello Neighbor, uh, just all of it, guys. <laughs> random, random, oh, oh, come on! <laughs> what? Ooh. What happened? Ooh. Apparently the game shut down from your fucking monkey yapping! Oh, so it's a nasty movie hype? Hello? And it was also around this time that Pony oh Show God, really wait. started to yes. pop off in viewership yeah. and subscriber oh count. God. Though I can't show you because all the data was expunged when they deleted all the videos from the channel. If I really had to give you an estimate of what the numbers were for like each video, uh, sometimes it would be in the hundreds of thousands, and sometimes even millions. He seems to he seems to not understand that a stairway is for walking instead of cabinets, and I was hit by a piano. Oh shit! Apparently, this guy is stockpiling weapons grade plutonium. <laughs> and to keep people from breaking in and finding out, he's dropping pianos on their head. I'm finished! I arranged them into a piano. Get out of here, you son of a bitch! Punisher would be doing great until the faithful and sad year of 
August 2016, where YouTube decided to put into effect favoring kids content more than uh, mature content, guys. Honey, you ain't gonna get time to scream. <laughs> Because children are to be seen and beaten, okay? Um, and apparently, apparently she's been beaten too many times, because that's, that's a bad or, sound. And sadly, I have to break it to you guys, YouTube is kind of like a abusive relationship. Basically, you do your best to try to please them, but they still end up whooping your ass anyway. And it was this change that put the final nail in the coffin for the channel that we once called Pony Cho. And in 2017, there was silence. Until this video came out. Now we haven't posted a video in a month and I feel I owe you guys an explanation. So here's your update. I called Damien about two weeks ago and told him I'm out as far as Ponage is concerned. Uh, views have been diminishing for several years at this point on the channel and YouTube's new wonderful algorithm change they don't ever let anybody know about ahead of time. Uh, thanks for killing your talent. It's a real brilliant business strategy you guys have. Uh, has just diminished our views to the point where it's just economically doesn't make sense for me to continue making content on this channel. And then Kyle gave Damien the channel and soon, Pony's show faded to obscurity. The death of Pony's show was a really sad one. They may have not been of your, the likes of PewDiePie or Markiplier's, but there was a good comedy duo, and they also have a history prior to this with uh, Make Me Bad 35 and all that. They would then private all the videos. Uh, it was still why is basically that they privated the videos because Kyle needed a job. Pony Show was a prime example of Golden Age YouTube, where you could say anything, be funny, and you wouldn't get punished for it. If you say things I don't want to hear, I'll blow you off, and you'll this, be forced back to try. This is, <laughs> this, is, blow me this is my problem in relationships. I always hear what I want to hear. Did she just say she will blow us? And that's something that's lacking nowadays in YouTube. You, you, you gotta always be peering over your shoulder uh, to make sure that the algorithm gods ain't fucking you because you said one bad word. Hey, how's it going? I've actually got something for you. This is the bread that you asked me to get, and you can now go make me a sandwich. Punisha had the potential to be something extremely special. Something that you don't get much out of YouTube this day of age so um one of my favorite personal videos to be honest from them is this one right here where they uh where they play finance at warriors but the challenge is fucking they gotta do rick grimes impressions for some reason he's got a blabber i mean i can skip the call but he's telling me valuable information i'm not listening to you so and you call yourself a man <laughs> jesus christ on the cross can i be your my fucking beard my beard is more of a man than you. My beard's got a bigger dick than you do. What the hell? Yeah, that's right. Hi, how are you? Oh, shit. What's that? It's Wario! It's Wario! Well, shoot him! It's who? Shoot him, Rick! Come on! Take no prisoners. Oh, what? He's not there. I don't got my gun. I gave it to my fucking kid. <laughs> no! Now, before I forget, y'all probably are asking what happened to Damien after all this. Well, he mostly disappeared uh, for a while, even on his main channel. But I forgot that he appeared in a Brock Baker video. So go subscribe to Brock Baker. I'm gonna let this video just explain where the fuck Damien's been. Damien! Have you downloaded Disney Plus yet? No. Why? I don't want to. Why? But Damien, Disney Plus has all the classic movies, like 
Mr. Boogity. Candle that. shoe. No, I don't know. Fuzz bucket. That doesn't sound right. Do no. not disrespect Fuzz Bucket. I have Netflix. Oh, does Netflix have Fuzz Bucket, Damien? I'm gonna run you over with my train. I bought a train. I own a train now. I'm gonna tie you to the tracks and run you over. You think that's funny? I'm just eating broccoli. What? I'm just trying to eat broccoli. Shut the fuck up, Damien, and get Disney Plus and watch Fuzz Bucket and Candle Shoe and the uh, Smart House. This isn't over, Damien. I'm gonna make you download Disney Plus. We need more money. Disney wants to blow up the sun. What? No more life. What? Is this, this is funny to you? Human extinction is a game? <laughs> you think that's a fucking joke? Listen here, you piece of human garbage. You're gonna download Disney Plus. And you're gonna like it. You're gonna watch all the original shows. The Mandalorian. That Jeff Goldblum thing. Uh, the candle shoe. What is candle shoe? Shut the fuck up and just download the app. Anyways, uh, I hope Damien and Kyle are well with whatever they're doing uh, in their lives. And hopefully they're just happy uh, with whatever they do. Who the fuck is shooting fireworks off outside? Shut the fuck up. Oh, so they're not killing people. That's good. That's good. It's good, Kyle. I wish they would fucking kill themselves. <laughs> just like I hope I just those did. go off in your fucking house and burn you and your family to the ground. Hey, hey you're shit. interrupting my time. Shut, Shut up, up you. you, Kyle. Um, but now, let's go on to our next YouTube video. Oh, sleep. <sighs> Guess who's right above you? <laughs> Don't you wish you didn't eat that burrito? <laughs> that plus an added pint of ice cream <laughs> made you dream a dream of me. <laughs> Golden Boots is a channel created by Damien Akin Chaikabi and Vincent Bova. Two street performers who use puppets to entertain people on the New York City subway met with success. They began posting videos in 2004 with a style that was reminiscent of early entertainment shows like Sesame Street and The Electric Company. The show was on hiatus until 2010, at which the time the format underwent some changes in technology and switched to a slightly older demographic, with more references to pop culture and such. Golden Boots styles their videos in a format similar to blogs, with the choice that they use puppets uh, to convey what's happening in the world at the moment. What are you guys doing? What does it look like? You thought it was a rose Dan Aykroyd. I can't believe he agreed to do this. I would do anything for you. I would never raise a hand in anger against Thor. Oh. Yeah. You're totally right. Okay, I've got my resume, I took a shower, what am I forgetting? Stop it! It's turning me on! And I kid you not, this very video that I'm showing you right now was made nine years ago, but you wouldn't even be able to tell. You know, I don't like juice. No, it's not. It's full of sugar. I'd rather just eat the fruit. Well, what about orange juice? No. Grape? No. Pineapple juice? No! I don't like the juice. I'll stop fighting you. You know, I don't like juice. Blah! I'm going to share this with the whole world. I don't like the juice. Breaking news. Mario, 
from the YouTube channel Glove and Boots is allegedly anti-Semitic. We caught up with Mario's co-host Fafa earlier today with an exclusive interview. So, explain yourself and explain Mario's hatred for the Jews. <gasps> what are you talking about? Mario's cousin David is Jewish. Mario just doesn't like that drink. He doesn't like juice. He'd rather drink milk or water. Suppose you're guilt free. There are no drinks you don't like. You know what I don't like? The Chinese bubble tea drinks. You fucking what, mate? Those are gross. Scandal. According to the facts, both hosts of Glove and Boots are bigots. For those of you who don't know what bigots are, they are holes. These guys somehow fucking predicted modern society, and I applaud them. These guys were so popular to one point that YouTube hired them to create a video about the copyright system. Too bad they fucked them in the ass afterwards. To better understand this phenomenon, The Times turns to Johnny T, a YouTube star who offers etiquette tips for riding the subway and navigating New York City. Ain't no fucking way New York came to ask this total looking motherfucker about some tips. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Iggy, get out of here! He's still alive! Just like Pony Show, in 2016 when YouTube decided to update their algorithm, a lot of channels were hit by what we called the adpocalypse, where videos weren't being sent out and people's demographic and audience slowly just started to die out. And sadly, this took a hit to Glove and Boots because, again, the videos weren't being pushed out all that often. And in late 2017, they decided to retire. This didn't last long though, but what would come next is something that would be even worse than retiring for Glove & Boots. Do not sit in a chair that has another customer in it. <laughs> I can't believe this is still here. What? What they still wear? The camera, still sitting here on the tripod. Hey, why are you dusting it? Sick, your five dollar ass. Down. And who knows when we're gonna need it again? Need it? That is stupid. It would take a miracle for us to start making videos again. Did that just happen? had some problems to solve a year ago, so we took a break from making videos and hired some scientists to figure out what went wrong. One of those things that went wrong is everyone stopped watching our videos. Another thing that went wrong was, hmm, how do I put this? We started using words that only adults should use. No, 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 no. We started getting a lot of flack that we were being too wait, 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 wait. Speaking of science, those new scientist friends, they suggested the following. We should stop being lowbrow, return to our roots, which means pivot towards kids. It's always the motherfucking kids that ruin everything. Kids! Yes, I do understand that aiming towards kids content nowadays on YouTube makes the bag. But at the same time, if you already have a established audience that loves you for being adultish and such like that, if you turn to kids content, it just fucking kills the channel! We'll get them next time. What kind of sense does it fucking make? I love the sentiment. I, I, I really do. Because 
the reason they said that they wanted to do kids content and go back to the roots was because all the audience had grew up and probably already had kids of their own. So, they wanted to entertain the new generation. Now, I want to ask you guys about how this went down. Either A, they did well moderately for some time and then they started to dip back off. B, it took an even more massive blow to the channel than it already was going. Or the third option, old fans came back and they did not like the new shit. Go on, I'll give you a second. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I'm not gonna lie, this was a massive blow to Glove and Boots. It did well for a tiny bit, but compared to the old stuff before, um, it did not go so well. Because they started to dip, 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 and dip in viewership. Until eventually, they just stopped uploading altogether. The downfall of Glove and Boots is a tricky one. A lot of factors contributed into the downfall. A mix of it just being the algorithm not pushing out the videos, them not understanding the prime target audience at the time, which was adults who were very geeky. Not to mention that a couple years after they started doing this, Coppa went into effect. And since they used puppets in their videos, they were the prime target of Coppa. They went, No, you snaggy little boy, no puppets for you! It's sad considering so much they achieved. They they received multiple awards. Uh, they received a Shorty Award for Best Video Blogger, a Pixie Award for Visual Effects, and a Webby nomination for Best Writing. But with all that out of the way, you guys are probably asking, what happened to Damien and Vincent? Well, I'm about to tell you before we move on. For a quick little explanation, basically, when Glove and Boots first decided to revamp the show and get it up and running, they first partnered with Bento Box, which you may know them as the people who produced. The tiny show is a bit obscure, but uh, it's called Bob's Burgers. But in 2019, they were then picked up by Moonbug Entertainment, who is known for making. No! It can't be! No! No! Do what you want, cause a pirate is free! You are a pirate! Yeah! Captain Joe was a Finance at Freddy's and Finance at Treasure Islands fan game YouTuber. Around 2015 to 2017. Starting to see a trend, huh, now, guys? Well, when I tell you guys this, I mean this with the most heavy heart I could say possible. But this guy is considered lost media at this point. Because everything about him was wiped off the face of YouTube. You can't even find this man on Wikitubia or fucking Wikipedia. Man's legit pulled. A person grows once they're able to defeat their weaker self. <laughs> Captain Joe, as the name suggests, uh, is because Joe based his personality on YouTube around being a pirate. Which means he didn't dress up as a pirate or anything, because that'd be fucking ridiculous, as you know. Ahoy, Walter. Put your dick away, Walter. I am the one that has good. But Joe was just the guy that was a potty mouth and would play Finance of Freddy's and Finance of Treasure Island fan games. Such as Squidward's Tortellini, One Night at the Clubhouse, and uh, Five Nights at Mickey's Pizza Club. Since there isn't a timeline on when he deleted his channel or when he wiped himself completely clean off the face of the internet, I'm gonna just basically go loosely based on what I know happened to Joe, uh, which means this will be a short segment, so don't worry about it being like 8 minutes long. Joe would rise to popularity somewhere around 2015 to 2016, 
Considering Final Fantasy Freddy's success, a lot of fan games started to be pumped out. It's one being Final Fantasy Treasure Islands, which I mostly knew him for. Um, Joe would keep on chugging along, making content, and kept making friends with developers, getting early access to fan games, the usual YouTuber stuff. Until somewhere around 2017, he decided to branch off from Final Fantasy Freddy's and Final Fantasy Treasure Island games into Roblox games. <laughs> And I won't go on the note and say before you guys think of anything that he did this for a good reason. Sure, he could have not done Roblox, but he did it for a good reason. Because around the same time that the apocalypse hit and everything else hit, he had a child. And his reasoning for going family friendly was because he didn't want his child to grow up go back and look at the videos he was making and see him as the potty mouth that he was at the time. And I think W Mans. Could he have done not Roblox? Yeah, he could have. But he did it for his kid. He did this for a couple of years and in my opinion, I think around 2018, 2019, he decided to just quit YouTube altogether and he just wiped everything, he deleted everything, and he just decided to go on, get a new job, and raise his kid. Captain Joe, if you're watching this, we haven't forgotten about you, man. Um, I hope your kid's well, and I hope that you're living life to the fullest, and I hope uh, you do great in parenthood, man. Uh, thank you for making my childhood, and I salute you. To honor Captain Joe, here is a compilation of the last remaining footage that I was able to find on YouTube of him. So I figured I beat you! 40 times in 6 hours you got me! news okay it appears that mr captain joe himself has been found thanks to our credible sources from malrat from twitter uh it appears that he's been on his buddy's channel doing content with him for a while now and i was able to find some of that footage let's get into that yo this chair comfy as fuck also what the fuck this ain't Okay, welcome, Joe. Back to golfing. Yeah. Oh, dear God. Are you ready for this one? Not really, but, um, I, I guess I don't have a choice. I'm actually duct taped to my chair here. Is the stroke thing showing up for you? Yeah, stroke thing's showing up for me. I got two strokes on wet wiener. Jump! Oh, oh. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, I just dunked my balls in a wet place, and uh, there we go. So now that's not the only thing that's wet. Yeah, and I fell a little short. Uh, you son of a... And I'm in. I'm not really in a good spot here. And you're still back there getting paid. So we back in the mine, got our pickaxe swinging from side. Now when you guys think of Minecraft, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Sometimes it may be dream. I suck his dick. Some people may say Sunday. Gosh, that's so crazy. All right, let's go. <laughs> look at this. Woo! <laughs> Dude, come on. We have to make this look better. Yeah, of course we do. It, it looks like a penis. How does it look like a? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a penis. And if you're one of those people, you may say Dan TDM. Um, in the testing chamber here. So, um... DR. TRAYORIS! WHAT ARE YOU DOING?! WHAT- I TOLD YOU NOT TO BE HOMOPHOBIC TODAY! DR. TRAYORIS! WHAT ARE YOU DOING?! NO! NO! WE CAN'T BURN THE GAYS! Maybe popular MMOs? You could possibly get this one right. I might get it! Give me some hints! Alright, so basically, it's a baby albino monkey. MICHAEL JACK- But me personally, I think of calling my gun. Call of My Gun is an Australian Minecraft mod YouTuber. 
that showcases Minecraft mods while also doing let's plays of scary games and such. Tanmay would start his YouTube channel on May 17th, 2012, starting out playing Call of Duty and just having fun until this the sweet little game, you know, the, the, the Minecraft. One of the first videos that would blow up on his channel would be Top 5 Scariest Minecraft Mobs, which would be this video that I'm showing you right now. If that didn't scream 2012, I don't know what will. Let's start the top 5 with the Weeping Angels mod. These angels just won't stop crying. <laughs> When you use this mod, you won't be able to sleep, and I mean it. This is a creepy pasture mod which adds in loads of archives into Minecraft. Let's start by spawning in Jeff. After spawned in, it'll start raining, and this creature is really fast and scary looking joker. If you wish to get his knife, you have to spawn Jen the killer, which will then cry and kill Jeff. If you want that knife, she has to kill him. And if you do kill him, you won't get the knife, but he'll be dead, so anyhow, it's it's a good thing. An undead creature called Rake, he's a lightning fast monkey. Face it, you're out of moves, Woo. Oh yeah? How about this one? Oh. I call it the cage monkey. Now all of you know this creature as the Slenderman, but in this creepypasty, he's called Slendy. He's the same as the other Slenderman, but he has arms that will try and grab you. If you're a girl, I'd recommend to stay away from him, and I think you know why. What do you mean by that? <laughs> this is Squidward from the Bikini Bottom. He hates his life so much that when you right click on him, he basically gets pissed off at himself and dies. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. I'm over here stroking my dick. Grab those fluffy bunnies because you're gonna need them for this scary mod called the Mutant Creatures mod. Let's start with the Mutant Enderman. He has four arms that can throw blocks at you. He spawns loads of clones to hide himself. Telly smashes, screams at you so you piss your pants. And after he is dead, you can pick up blocks using this Ender Soul hand and you can place any block down and throw. Yo, these spots were sick at the time. <laughs> now, what the fuck do we have? We have a. Skibbity toilet Minecraft mod. I fucking knew it. He would keep on making Minecraft mod videos for a while, as they did pretty well until he would then branch out into let's plays, doing horror games and such. You know the usual like eerie, finance at Freddy's, finance at anime. Now picture this: when I, I was watching all these guys, including Call of My Gun, I was legit nine years old, around nine. Legit on my mom's computer fucking watching YouTube videos at the time most of the stuff that I shouldn't have been watching at my age You know PewDiePie 4 a.m. Waking up in the morning gotta be fresh gotta go downstairs gotta have my ass gotta have my ass Fuck off Freddy. I mean Steve whatever gotta get down to the bus stop Gotta catch my butts. I see my friend Kick it in the front seat eating ass in the back seat Gotta make my mind up, which ass can I take? It's ass did Get it? I changed the lyrics with ass. Uh, that soothing noise of nobody around. Hey, look, that's my wife. <laughs> oh, shit, it is. What's she doing here? Does this, does this mean she's cheating on me? I'm your man. I find her. I think, I think that's what I have to do. I have to find her. Uh, hey there! How you doing, buddy? Hey, look at the sound it makes. <laughs> okay, let's keep on moving. Keep trying. You're never gonna scare me. A few moments later. Please, please leave me alone. Everything is all right. I'll just spray paint a little bit. So I'm all right. Oh, freaking hell! What's he doing? Why is he dancing? Oh shit! 
I hate male toilets now. I'm only taking female. I'm going to female toilets only. I'm screwed. I know it. Like there are moments when you know you're screwed, and this is one of the moments. Look at that faggot. What did he say? Killer. Faggot. Killer. Faggot. From San Diego. It's okay, guys. It was like what 2014. Gays weren't accepted then. What are you doing? This is a male toilet. Go to freaking abnormal toilet. Okay. Oh, looks like that. Looks like, uh, I can't even speak right now. It looks like you found. Me. Oh, let's play hide and seek with him. Let's stroll him. Let's stroll him. Hey, what are you doing? Which way are you gonna go, bitch? You gonna come here? You gonna go down there? You gonna come back up, bitch? Hi. Right, so what are you gonna do? Where? The Oh, faggot! Bring it out! Run! <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I got a good idea. Wait, yeah, let's spray him. Let's spray him. Let's spray him. Let me spray you. Let me, let me make you beautiful. Let me make you beautiful. That faggot is falling me! Get, get out of here! Freaking out! That was the power of old YouTube guys. Huh. I know, crazy, right? Ten May's views fluctuated from time to time, you know, going up and down. Until August 2016, where he posted a video basically saying that he was done with YouTube for a while. And he doesn't know when he was coming back because he had a business uh, side in Australia that he was pursuing. And again, he was in high school at the time when he created his channel. So, man was chasing that bag. Who could blame him? And for seven years now, he's been mostly inactive. Until... Hey guys, not sure who will see this post. Gosh, it's been five years. I still have kept this channel even though I don't use it, because these are fun memories, not just videos. Hope you guys have been well. It's a crazy world we live in nowadays with the pandemic. Sheesh. Do I still play Minecraft? Nah. But it was fun when it lasted. I enjoy some gaming for myself, Call of Duty, Vanguard, Cold War, Modern Warfare, I think you get my point. Occasionally enjoy some story type games like Resident Evil Village and God of War. Will I come back to YouTube? Who knows? Stay safe. I honestly hope that Tim A returns to YouTube. Sure that he would have to adapt to modern times because, you know, not how to say this was anymore. But with all that being said, a lot of these YouTubers played a big part into me wanting to even do YouTube nowadays. This video is basically a homage to the legacy that should not be forgotten because it plays a very big part into what made YouTube YouTube. These people along with many others inspired me inspired other people to strive and do content on this platform. Even when it gets tough nowadays with the ever-changing platform that is YouTube, we still go forward to honor the people that came before us. Even if it's as simple as being stupid and goofy on the internet to make a couple strangers laugh. Because even those laughs go a long way into shaping childhoods for generations to come. The one common thing that shares among all these other YouTubers that is indefinite is time. Eventually, we are all lost to time, but that's why we preserve stuff, to never truly, you know, be forgotten. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sadly, that's the case for a lot of things. But, I'm gonna stop uh, wasting y'all's time, you know, yeah, y'all wanna get, y'all wanna get on and going, so... I'm going to leave all these YouTubers links down in the description if you guys want to go check them out. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, I'm going back to college. This was just the video that I've been working on for months and months. And to be honest, it was fun making it. Uh, it really brought me down memory lane. And I love you guys. I'll see y'all. Around Christmas. <laughs> Anyways, good night, fag.